Hi guys, it's Ashley from the Tech Play Cam. Demonstrating some uh, sine wave functionality that you can utilize in your games. Now, you're probably wondering, what is a sine wave? A uh, sine wave is pretty much just this. It is a wave that is made up of frequency and amplitude. Although ours has a couple extra additions, though, to allow us to use it for games properly. So, let me explain this function here. This is our sine wave uh, function, or sine wave expression, or whatever you choose to call it. It is composed of four different variables, x, f, a, and o. Now, let me quickly explain what these do. We'll start off by ignoring x for a second, and we'll just look at f. f is our frequency. Now, for those that don't know, the frequency of a wave is the distance between its peaks. So the higher we increase the frequency, the smaller the distance between the peaks. The lower, the bigger the distance between the peaks until we reach zero where it's you know, a flat line. Now, the next thing we have as a part of this function is the amplitude or A. The amplitude defines how tall and how low these uh, waves can get, right? So it defines the value of the peak, essentially, and it defines the value of the valley, I guess you would call it, the bottom, you know? <laughs> uh, the very bottom of the wave, the lowest point that the wave can reach, and the highest point that the wave can reach, right? It determines that value. So the higher we go, the higher those values go, or lower in the uh, bottom's case. So we'll just put that back to one for now. Now, the next thing that we have is offset. Offset allows us to control whereabouts this wave will start, essentially. So, if we look at zero point here, we can define exactly where that zero point will start. Right? It just offsets all our values up and down right, to our, our liking. That can be very useful for games. If we don't want to start our values off at zero, we want to maybe start them at one or something. Right? We could do that. Very, very useful for games. Now, the next part is X, and this is what allows us to actually utilize this very easily in games. It's essentially the time variable. As you can see, as we go across or up in the X or down in the X, this blue line here moves. And where that blue line intersects with the sine wave is where we are currently uh, in the sine wave, I suppose, which point we're currently at. Right? That will determine our Y point, really. So, say for instance, we are... God. Okay, I can't quite line it up exactly, but 1.6, we're just going to say this is 2. It's, yeah, it's probably about 2. don't think it started going down here, but anyways, yeah. So at 1.6 in the time, we're currently at 2 Y value. So we would pull that data and we would utilize that in the game. Now to show you how to utilize that in the game. Here I have an example scene. We have two cubes here. We have this, just so we can gauge some height. It's really just a bunch of objects here just so we can gauge where we're at in the world. Otherwise, if it was just a blank canvas, you wouldn't be able to tell. Here is our movable cube. It already has a script attached because I've tried this video once already and I didn't quite like the output, so here we are again. It has a mesh instance to display our cube so we can actually render it to the screen here. And it has a camera 3D uh, just attached to the movable cube because writing a camera follow script takes a small amount of time, so I don't want to have to do that didn't make much sense, I might as well just attach it to the cube. Although realistically in a game you'd probably have a, a camera follow script and you know it wouldn't follow so statically with it, there would be a bit of like lerping and whatnot, you know, a bit of linear interpolation. Anyways, now here is what it currently does. Uh, I got it moving on all axes, so I'm sorry, that's a bit disorienting. Um, <laughs> just, just remembered that. Uh, let me quickly get it off the z-axis. Um, just because that's the disorienting bit. But anyways, this is what it does. It just goes, it can go left and right and up and down utilizing sine waves. I did this little hacky thing here where I have two different frequencies and two different amplitudes. But anyways, so what we do down here, you can pretty much ignore this, right? This is just so I can press uh, escape to quit out. What we want to do is you would want to start off by instantiating a variable called time. That will be our x variable from back here, right? the nice blue line. Then, what we want to do is we want to make sure 
to uh, you can do this as well. You can specify your amplitude and your frequency and, yeah, and your offset, or you can just do it all within the function down here. Then what we want to do in our process function, which is called every frame, by the way, is we want to add delta to our time variable. Delta is really just a measurement in milliseconds between each frame. So say, for instance, we're running at 60 FPS. That's, I believe, 0.16 milliseconds between each frame. Was it 1.6 milliseconds between each frame? Oh, I don't quite remember. But, you know, it's X amount of milliseconds between one frame and the next, right? So we add delta to it so that we can, we can actually gauge time. When a second passes, that time variable will read 1000 milliseconds. Pretty simple. Then what we want to do, because we're changing the position of our uh, node, we need to first store the position in a temporary variable because we cannot um, directly assign the X, Y, and Z positions in this position variable. We can only change it as a whole, not individually. So in order to get around that, we just have a nice little temporary variable called pos. Then what we do is we change pos y to be math.sin, which is a mathf.sin, which is Godot's math library. And this uh, is the sine function within that library. You can also change the cosine as well. Uh, it's slightly different results than using sine, but otherwise practically the same thing. Anyways, then what we do inside this little sine function, we want to calculate the sine of time times frequency. Now in Godot 4 you have to convert um, what's it time back to a float because time would need to be a double to add delta to it. It could also be a float you can convert delta to a double but uh, your choice which way around you do that really. <laughs> you could do it either which way. Either way uh, in this instance I am going to typecast time to a float because I'm in Godot 4 and delta is a double. Uh, if you're in Godot 3, all of this can just be a float, so you don't need to typecast. And then we run the times it by frequency. Then the resulting sine from timesing time by frequency, we're going to times that by amplitude, right? So, you know, uh, once again, go back to our example, we have frequency here, so we times times by frequency. And then we're going to times it by amplitude, which gets us our bottom and top, like max and min. And then we add our offset, which yeah, allows us to go up or down, depending on the circumstance. Ah. Oh, that's messy. Right. Oh, I keep going through the wrong workspace there. I'm tired. And we pretty much do the same thing for POSX. It's just we're using frequency 2 and amplitude 2. Although I kind of want to lower that down a, a wee bit. There we go. And then we just set position to equal pos. And that's pretty much it. This is essentially what we get. We get some pretty nice movement, right? Nice up, down, left, right movement. Could almost look like a screensaver in the right conditions. Very snazzy, very useful. Now, from that, you're probably wondering where the devil can I even use this, right? Uh, I've got one little example. It's not the best example on the planet, but it'll do. Let me go to my current project. All right currently has no name but it will be a 2.5D scroller and let me go ahead and start up the game uh, bear in mind the animations are here I'm just messing around with animation trees that are currently not implemented properly but as we can tell my pig is breathing uh, I'm using a sine wave for that to get that kind of steady breathing pattern going and you know I'm able to fine-tune that all I want really I can come over to um, where the hell am I going <laughs> Uh, did I put a part? No, I didn't put a part of that, did I? Oh shit, things to remember, when the hell did I... Oh, I've hard-coded that, haven't I? I'm an idiot. My bad. I have got it hard-coded, haven't I? Yep, here it is. Uh, yeah, so I could, in theory, uh, change these variables. Um, so, for instance, if I wanted to change... Uh... I know I wanted to change the frequency. I could make it faster breathing, so I could go like ridiculous and do 10.5f. And then that would kind of create this very like quick panting motion almost. Yeah, you could change this to your heart's content really, and you'd be able to mess around with it quite a bit. I have got a separate frequency for walking because I was messing around with that a bit. Although now I think of it, maybe I could up that to 4. That'd be a good example as well. 
So yeah, you can obviously mess around with these variables as you want. You can even get them to change on the fly, maybe even randomize them if you so desired. But yeah, you see, because I'm walking now, it's going up and down a lot faster than when I stop. It goes back to being slow again. And that is the beauty of sine waves, pretty much. There's a lot you can do with these. Um, you can use them for gun bobbing animations. You could use them for bird flight. Uh, you could use them for waves. They're very commonly used for waves, actually. It's very good use of them. Um, there's all kinds. I'm pretty sure you could even use it for like ripple effects. Once again, waves, isn't it? I don't know. There's all sorts of uses for it. I can't think of all of them off the top of my head, but there's a, there's a shit ton of uses. <laughs> Anyways, thank you for watching the video, guys. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you've gained something from this. And um, yeah, see you another time.